Hello, welcome, I'm Hannah, and today we're gonna be talking about and ice watching the Adept Cosmetics Minka palette. This came out in October, and I had every intention of buying it when it came out, but then just a couple days before, I was like, do I really need it? I was kind of having that, that feeling of overwhelm with makeup, and when I feel that, I like to step back a little bit because I don't have to buy anything, even if I was planning on buying it. And I felt pretty satisfied by that decision. People's swatches and looks on Instagram looked really pretty, but I was like, I know I can get those looks with other shadows, and I have the Davina Moonscapes, which I suspect could be similar. But when I saw in December that they had it available with no pre-sale time, I was like, okay, I want it. So I got it, and it came like three days later. It's still in the plastic and everything. I know it's January now, but I wanted to save my first impressions for being on camera, and I was kind of booked up when it came to eye swatches and stuff like that, so here we are now. But yeah, I'm really excited to dig in. I hope it's good. The only other palette I have from Adept is the original Plain Jane palette. This one came out, I believe it was 20... 20 and I got it in 2021. They've since made a remastered version with pan sizes that are similar to the Minka, but I have the original one with the bigger pan sizes. I think you can tell. But I really like this formula. So if it's anything like that, I think I'll be happy. I don't know. But yeah, let's, uh, let's see. So I'm gonna swatch the 10 shimmers the mattes I'll incorporate into a look that I'll put on at the end. And I want to get the most comparable ones on the eyes at the same time, because a concern of mine was that some of these neutral shades look kind of similar. So what I'm going to do is first swatch this first one, which is Minka, alongside this one here, which is Maya. Those both look like a similar, kind of more silvery tone. And then after that, I'm going to swatch Emma, with Layla. They both look kind of like taupey champagnes. I'm going to swatch Ava with Luna. They're a little bit more bluish, grayish. And then these two together, Nora and Cora, and then Linda and Selena together. I'm really intrigued by these. They look like a different formula than the other ones in the palette. They're definitely multi-chromes. They both look pink right now on camera. To my eye, both green. So I'm really curious what the difference is going to be, what the finish is going to be like. As usual, I don't have anything on my eyelid. It's possible I'll use my dirty foundation brush at some point just to minimize the moisture that I have from removing the swatches. But I won't be putting on primer or anything until perhaps the end, but I'll, I'll tell you. So let's start with Minka. Mm -hmm. It feels like what I thought it would feel like. It feels very wet. And this is super, super foiled on my finger. Wow. Cool. I'm really curious how these are going to look next to the Moonscapes because I think on my finger this looks just like it, but it feels different. Oh, wow. It definitely has texture in there. I can feel some, like, roughness when I smooth that on, but that is to be expected with such a large particle size. This is a lot. And I wasn't expecting it, but it's definitely a duochrome. I can see that really intense, like, bronzy gold, but straight on. It's like a really true silver. I think that's a really interesting shade, and I like it. My first impression for the first shadow is that I like it. Even still on my finger after swatching on my eye, there's so much pigment left. Yeah, my first impression is that this is what I hoped it would be. Okay, we're gonna go into Maya now, and it feels the exact same. It feels super emollient. Like, it feels like you're touching something wet, but textured also. And it feels the same way as it smooths on. Kinda hurts. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared to remove this, because it's going to hurt. This one, huh. This one, I'd say, is even more shifty. Straight on, it has a similar silver color, but you can see the duochromeness escaping, whereas with this one, you really can't see much of the duochrome when it's straight in the light. But this one looks like a coppery bronze shift. I'm so surprised. I did not expect these to be so shifty. Wow. 
It also looks like a smaller particle size, just like in finish. I feel like the silver glittery bits look more PC in the shade Maya than they do in the shade Minka. Wow. I am glad I put these on at the same time because they are very similar, just more gold and more copper. Okay, next up we're gonna do these two shades that look like they have a little bit more color in the pan. It's Emma and then Layla. Same feel, picking it up. This almost feels a little smoother going on. Eh, no, I still feel like grittiness. Oh, wow. My first impression is this looks like C-3PO. <laughs> from Star Wars. Cool. Yeah, this one has a really bright gold shift to it, and the straight-on color is more of like a neutral gold. That's really pretty. It's really pretty. I don't have much to say. The formulas feel really consistent so far. I'm just so surprised by the shifts. Let's go into Layla. Feels the same. Pretty. It almost feels like putting on a pressed glitter all over my eye, but at the same time, I don't mind that, especially because it has that full pigment of an eyeshadow. Most pressed glitters that I use are kind of more, they sheer out a little bit more, like the glitter moves around when it's on your eyeball, but this one, it's full pigment. I would say the sparkle on this is a little bit more of a lighter gold, like a cornflower gold, and then the shift to it is like a neutral bronze. These are really interesting. I have glitter all over my face and my eyelids hurt so bad. I've encountered formulas like this before. Sometimes formulas just feel rougher than others. And I know people have varying levels of sensitivity for it. For me, it's no problem at all when I'm doing my makeup and I'm putting it on and then I'm washing it off at the end of the night. It's just when I'm doing eye swatching videos that I'm putting it on and taking it off and putting it on and taking it off that it hurts my eyelids. I definitely feel the texture when I'm putting it on, but it doesn't bother me if it's just one time. Okay, so next we're gonna go into Ava, which looks kind of like a grayed out taupe, and then we're gonna do Luna. And I can see pinky and purple sparkles to it, even though it looks straight up blue. I'm actually really excited about this one. Ava might be one that I'm less excited about, but we'll see. The good thing about Ava and this is that I feel like the four that we've already ice watched might have kind of similar looking shades in the moonscapes, but the moonscapes don't go this deep or this blue, so that'll be interesting. Let's see. Ava, I want to say it feels a little bit less emollient, and I'd say it looks less high intensity on my finger. Yeah, this one definitely feels like a more tame shade. Still super glittery, but it doesn't feel like as much of an explosion. I mean, but don't get me wrong. Those four that we've already ice watched are so intensely in your face that this one I think is still more bold and glittery than your regular eyeshadow, but it's just less so than those really, really, really intense four. This one does look like a grayed out taupe with a bronzy gold flip to it. I also want to point out that I have some shifty shades in my collection that when I look at them in the straight on light, I don't always see the shifts. So the fact that these shifts are so prominent in direct ring lighting tells me a lot about these shadows. I think this one's interesting, but I, I bet that it'll be the one in this palette that I get the least use out of. It's just not my particular shade, but if I do want to do like a deep dark black smoky eye. I could see myself putting this on. Okay, Luna. This one feels very emollient to the point that it feels almost tacky, but I don't mind that when you also feel like the texture coming up and it'll be intense. This one does look deeper on my finger though than I would have thought. Yeah, this one feels way more like sticky, kind of like foiled. Oh wow. This is very different than I would have expected. The shadow is way deeper. It looks like a black-based multi-chrome. A black-based, like, gel multi-chrome. That's really interesting. Okay, and now I revise my position that if I were to do a dark black smoky eye, I feel like I would put this shade in it and not this shade. <laughs> it's interesting. I just don't think it's the kind of thing I'm going to reach for. I'll have to see. 
Maybe with the formula being so emollient, it would work well as a liner, but I don't tend to do that kind of thing either. But that is a thought. Very interesting. I did not think we were going to get shades like this in this palette. I took a minute and I put my Marriott Oil Serum Hydrator on my eyelids because they were hella thirsty. I've never done that during an ice washing video before, but I think we're ready to proceed. We are next going to do Nora and Cora. I did kind of let the oil sink in and I smeared it away with my foundation brush, so I don't think it should affect the outcome of the swatches. Nora feels less emollient. It also looks less sparkly than the ones up top. Oh, but that does look like a beautiful gold. Wow. It kind of reminds me of JD Glow Fool's Gold, but like perhaps better. That's interesting. I think this one, the flip doesn't look as obvious because it looks like two sides of the same shade. Like it's kind of like a bronzy base all over, but then it like reflects to like a true bronze on the outside and more of like an antique gold on the inside. That's interesting. I like that because I feel like you might not even register at first that it's like a shifty shade. You know what I mean? I have eyeshadow on my cheeks too. I am a mess. I like this one a lot. Okay, Cora. It looks like a more greeny gold version. It feels very emollient. Ooh. This might be my favorite shade. I love the brightness. As much as I'm like getting into neutrals and I can really like dig a good, sparkly, sexy neutral, a bright color just like gets me. I love the tone of the screen. That's really cute. And this one looks like it has like a brown base and flip to it, more of like a bronze. And I like it. I wouldn't say that either of these are as intensely sparkly as the first four, but they are still sparkly enough to match or exceed the sparkliness of a lot of other shadows that I have in my collection. These are really interesting and I like them. We have two shades left, and it's going to be those two multi-chromatic looking ones, Linda and Selena. I put eye primer on because I'm just going to make the look around this. I had a thought a moment ago. I was like, I hope they look good enough together that I can leave them on for my look and film another video, but they have to. <laughs> there is no other option. I am not removing my makeup again just yet. I promise I don't always complain so much. These are just like killing me. So let's see. I'm really curious how these are going to go. Definitely feels like a way different formula. Definitely feels way less textured. You could tell, you could barely tell in the pan that I'm rubbing into it, which isn't always my favorite thing. I like when I can feel it coming up on my finger. Uh, huh. I'm going to try to dig it a little better because I hope this isn't what it's supposed to be like. I'm just rubbing a little bit harder in the pan and I can feel it coming up a little bit more. Okay, let's see. Huh. Well, this one is disappointing. I mean, all right, here's, here's all the thoughts. It looks pretty. It looks multi-chromatic, but it looks like a very basic black base multi-chrome and I was hoping it would be more because I have a lot of multichromes that I really like. I don't like all of that darkness that you see in it, and I don't like that it doesn't seem to, like, pop off. It doesn't seem vibrant or intense or sparkly. It does have that shift, and perhaps if you're someone who doesn't have a big collection of multichromes, this would be, like, a fun step into it, but I, I don't know. I do think you already have to be pretty experimentative with your eyeshadows to be purchasing this like intense foily palette anyway. Yeah, I don't know. First impression of this one, not a fan. Let's see about Selena. I wonder if that's going to be more of the same. Oh no, this one feels more emollient. Okay, okay, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay, still not my favorite multi-chrome in the world, but I do like that emollient feel. That's like what I expect from Adept, and I like that. It seems less shifty than this one, but again, we are in direct lighting, and the fact that I see any shift 
tells me that when I'm not in direct lighting, I'll see more of it. There is a bit of that dark cast, but it doesn't look quite as dark as this one. Yeah, I think of the two, this is the one that I'd be inclined to reach for. I do really like that pink but I feel like I'd be more likely to reach for like Venus from Terra Moons or something like that. I don't know what to do about this. Maybe I'll try to put some Selena over this guy and see what happens. Oh, that looks cool. What? I feel like Selena just picked up on the shiftiness of Linda, but then added that color to it and that like more intenseness. I've never seen anything like that. I'm gonna try to put Linda over Selena now. That's so weird. They look different based on which one went on first, but this is now a look that I can work with. I can build around. I've never seen two shadows mixed together so well. Like what happened over here blows my mind. I think they both have the same shift. So layering this one over this one just like amped it up a little bit. That's cool. All right. Since we're already here, I'm gonna try to layer on these mats a little bit with you. This lighter one, it's like a pale mauvey purple. It's called Toya. I do find myself liking the couple matte shadows that I have from Adept, but it has been a long time since I've gotten them and I don't know if they're like suppliers changed or anything. It seems okay. It doesn't seem too intensely pigmented. I feel like I'm definitely not getting the full story when I'm applying in this order and this isn't the order that I would apply in normally for any other reason than doing an ice watch video. But I can appreciate the lack of fallout. I don't need the mats to be great, to be honest. I'm okay reaching in for like perfect mats from somewhere else. But it is nice to have like an option. Oh. I'm ooing at how the color of that deep purple layered over it and made it like a really interesting fuchsia. I feel like we have some really kind of cool color theory things going on today. Okay, I think I'm going to just finish up my look off camera and we'll be back for some more thoughts, swatches, comparisons. And here is the finished look. And I hit pan on my bronzer. So I stuck with the top lid the way it was when we last spoke. On my lower lash line, I used both of the mattes, and then I also used a little bit of Linda on like the inner half, but I don't know if you could really even see. Yeah, I don't think it even came up at all. For my inner corner, I used Davina Soleil's, and I love that like glowing pink with like the purpliness of the rest of it. I'm really enjoying how it looks. I'm really enjoying the shift on the lid. I think layering these up together did something that I would not have imagined. Like this is true synergy. This is more than the sum of the parts. Often in ice watching videos I do rankings but I'm not gonna do that today because these aren't singles anyway. But I will tell you a lot of thoughts about the palette, recap everything that we saw here together, and I pulled out a bunch of shades for comparisons. Yeah let's first start by swatching out this palette. Minka, Emma, Ava, Layla, and touching these four in a row, I stand by the differences that I pointed out before. I think that Minka and Layla felt the most emollient out of all of these, and Ava definitely felt the least. Maya, Luna, Nora, Cora. And again, I think that Maya feels like the most emollient ones. Luna feels like almost tacky, and Nora and Cora feel kind of like step down a notch, but still, you know, moist enough <laughs> and beautiful. Linda, Selena, Toya, and Maria. That purple did not swatch very well, but it was also on my pinky. The performance shows and how it works, so I'm not too worried about that swatch, but yeah. It's a really interesting palette. I would say I think of this more like a collection of singles, like a bundle of singles you have to buy together, because I feel like with most palettes, 
you have the option of like mixing and matching and creating different looks and I think this is like a palette of lid shades this is a palette of like the one intense one and I think to wear one at the same time as another would kind of be to do a disservice to both of them with the exception of these two multi-chromes which are so much better together so much better layered most of the rest of them really have like an intense pressed glitter feel and an intense shift and if you were to put something else on the outer half, for example, and only keep a shade isolated to the inner half, you would lose that intense shift. Here is what my palette for comparisons looks like. I have the shade Moonlit, which was the original shade that the Moonscapes collection was based off of. And then I have five out of the collection. I used to have six. I decluttered Lucent Ray, the one that was the most purple, just because it wasn't as purple as I wanted it to, and decluttering that allows me to appreciate the other ones more, and I'm very happy with these six. I love these shadows, and we are going to swatch them out, but I think I can already tell you that the difference is the feeling of them, the texture of them. They are intense and flaky, but they're not as emollient and creamy as the Adept shadows are, and on top of that, these don't have a flip. These are gorgeous, like, straightforward colors. And I never looked at them as, like, needing a flip. Like, to me, these are enough on their own. But it is just, like, a different take on the idea to have these with a flip. And then also the difference is you have the option of buying these separately, and this one, you don't. So I would even say if you're not sure if you like this type of like really super intense foily flaky shadows, picking up one of these might be a better bet. Moonlit, Fire Hunt, Airglow. I would say Airglow is definitely the closest in vibes to like this one here, but none of those look like direct dupes. I think Moonlit also in the pan, it does look a little bit darker. I mean, I guess you could see that the parts my finger has dipped into look like the bright silver, but the other part looks like it would almost be like that dark gray one there. But it is certainly not. Pink Flare, Moonbeam, and my favorite Earthshine, which is more teal and definitely doesn't have a comparison in the Minka one. But I think you can see that the the finish of the formula is very similar. I guess I would say also these almost look a little bit more sparkly, the ones from Divina, but the ones from Adept have like a wet quality to them. Like besides the feel, they have a wet look to them and just in the way that the shine moves. But I bet that on the eye, they give a similar finish. I have Fool's Gold from JD Glow and I wanted to compare it to that really gold one. This shadow feels very soft, like a very soft powder. So off the bat, it feels very different. I think you could see, to compare to this one, it's a very similar color. It's like an intense goldy bronze that almost goes like an antique goldy green, but the formula of the Minka one is like more foiled, sparkly, intense. The one from JD Glow is a little bit more like silky looking. Still really pretty and shiny and reflective though. And then I pulled out a couple multi-chromes to compare to the two that are on my eyes. We have Venus from Terra Moons, because I know I mentioned that one. Forge from Cleona, because this is a black based multi-chrome that has that like reddishness that shifts green. So it is pretty similar to what like Linda is trying to do. And then Euphoria, I was reminded of by the second one, Selena. I'm going to swatch Forge first because it reminds me of this one that's up top more. So Forge is a really shiny, intense shadow. And you can see this looks like a watered down version of Forge. This looks like Forge after I've removed pigment in my swatch. Oh, that's a little dramatic. <laughs> I was gonna say after I swatch and then I go back in for another swatch, that's what I would think Forge would look like. This shade, it really does nothing for me until it's combined with the other shadow. It just, it needs to be amped up for me to like it. And then we have Venus from Terra Moons, which is, I believe they called a gray base multi-chrome, but there's really nothing deep about it at all. 
I love this shade. It's like a really pretty bright pink with like a bronzy flip to it. And it does look very different now that I have it swatched out. And then we have Euphoria from Luxy. And I think color-wise, that one is pretty similar to Selena, but I think it's a little bit less shiny, and I think it's a little bit less shifty. I do think it's a really interesting palette. I don't, like, completely know what to make of it, because I already have so many fantastic lid topper shades, and I have the Moonscapes that I have no no issues with, but I do appreciate palettes sometimes for, like, bringing together shadows that, I don't know, it just makes them easier to grab, it makes them more accessible. And these are different than the Moonscapes because they have those flips to them. I don't know. I'm excited to use these more. I'm very excited by how my hand looks right now. And actually looking at it, this pink flare looks really similar to that Minka one. I do have a video upcoming. I, when I say upcoming, I don't, I'm not making any promises for when it's going to be. It might be in a couple months, but I do want to eventually do a ranking video about all the palettes that I bought in 2022, just like I did in 2021. But I did get a number of palettes towards the end of the year, so I need time to just get my thoughts together on them to be able to compare. But I think when we come back in that video, I'm sure I'll be mentioning this palette before then also, but especially when we come back in that video, I'll be able to give you like the full rundown of how I feel about this palette after having it in use. But I will say, I think it's beautiful. I'm very intrigued. I think of the 10 shimmery shadows, I'm very excited about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Eight. Eight of them. Kind of nine if you count this one. So like eight and a half of them. And that's pretty good. I just, I don't know what I was expecting, but I think it did exceed my expectations just because it's similar to the Moonscapes that I love, but it goes a step beyond by having the shift in it. And I think that's just going to have to be my final thought for now. It's an interesting palette. I would say don't buy it for the multi-chromes. If you're going to buy it, buy it for, for these shadows. But I also think if you want a taste of this, it can be condensed in a couple shadows. You could pick up two of the Moonscapes and one of these multi-chromes and call it a day, you know? So yeah, I think, I think that's how I'm going to wrap it up. <laughs> I hope this was helpful. I know sometimes I have very clear thoughts, and I do have very clear thoughts about how things worked and stuff. I just don't completely know about how I'm going to get on with this long term. But I do really like the look, and I think that we discovered some valuable information here today. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And yeah, that's going to be everything for today. Bye.